Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here, out on a beautiful day here. It's early March. I'm in Delaware right now, so it doesn't really look like winter or necessarily feel too much like winter, but I'm actually planning on, within a matter of days, heading about 500 plus miles north into New England to do some winter backpacking, hammock camping, and snowshoeing. So this video is actually sponsored by backcountry.com. And for those of you unaware, backcountry.com is basically a superstore for backpacking gear. It's pretty much every major brand you can think of and you can just kind of shop it. In fact, I actually used, wow, I think it was at least five years ago that I used them for the first time. My winter backpacking ascent of Mount Washington five years ago, when I did that trip, I needed an ice axe to ascend Mount Washington, and that's where I got it from. They were the only people that had the one I was looking for, and to boot, it was a decent price, and they got it to me in two days. Uh, but anyway, I chose three pieces of winter backpacking gear to upgrade. Those of you who have been following the channel for a while now may have realized and may know that there's some pieces of gear I've been using for years now uh, ever since I started backpacking that I have never upgraded and they are sorely in need of upgrading So today I'm going to show you those pieces of gear. One of them is right there That's probably to be honest the one I'm most excited about. It's a new backpack I'll get to that in a minute in there is a second piece of gear and right here is my third piece of gear I guess I'll start with that a winter hard shell or in general just a hard shell This is good for really any backpacking uh, some of you would call it a rain jacket, but it also provides good protection from wind and traps a lot of body heat when needed. So my original hard shell jacket is from 2012. I probably should have replaced it a couple years ago. So this right here is a Marmont Eclipse hard shell. My friend Mike his wife actually has one of these, but I've always kind of noticed it and been a little jealous of it and its quality. So I figured that would be my first piece of gear that I upgrade. So I got a new hard shell. This is going to help me out, especially because this time of year in New Hampshire, it's probably going to be lows in the teens to single digits, but during the day it could pop a little higher. So I might get rain. You get that whole wet during the day, frozen at night. So I really want to stay dry and that old jacket had to go. So with this guy here, it is a breathable membrane. It'll keep me dry, but also kind of expel some moisture. It's got some pit zips on it, which is nice. It goes down pretty far. So actually, I could probably use those right now because it's not too cold and uh, that'll regulate my temperature. But if it started like a downpour or something, all of a sudden I could zip those up. On the sides, one thing I really like compared to my older jacket is they put the pockets up high because for backpacking you have the hip straps that come around, right, for support and they usually cover up the lower part of your jacket. So I tested it with that backpack back there that we'll get to in a minute and I can perfectly access my pockets without digging underneath the hip belt. Feeling pretty good so far. I got the uh, cuffs that I can velcro down over top of gloves and whatnot. And the hood is pretty roomy, has a little bit of a bill on it, so I can pull that over um, a baseball cap. Or, obviously, in my case up there, I'll probably just have a knit hat. But for rain, I do find it's nice to have a baseball cap and a nice hard shell that actually accommodates that brim. And it keeps the rain off your face, which is nice for spring, fall, shoulder season backpacking. So that's the jacket. Uh, the Marmot Eclipse, pretty excited to use that. Uh, like I said, my other jacket was just dying. So the next item that I'm super excited about is the backpack. Let's get that. So this right here is a beast of a backpack. It is by Fjallraven and it is the, specifically, the model is the Kaika. They are a company from Sweden. I've been eyeballing them for years now, really. Uh, not just because I really love Scandinavia, but because they have a reputation for making really good, sturdy backpacking gear. 
Um, from what I've read and known over the years as I've been eyeballing them, uh, they kind of have a kind of worldwide reputation as really sturdy, robust gear, particularly for winter, which for me, I'm kind of one extreme and the other. During the summer, I like to, I'm all about the ultralight game. You know, I'll have a base weight of like eight and a half pounds, um, and that's great. But in the winter, I go completely to the other side, the other extreme, and I bring a lot of gear because it's more critical from a survival standpoint, and you're just bringing a lot more stuff with you, as well as potentially more rugged or wet conditions. Uh, so I usually pack heavier in the winter. I have a lot more gear. So this pack right here is huge. They have several models of this in varying uh, capacities volume wise. I got, I think one of the biggest ones, if not the biggest, there might be an 85. This is the 75 liter model. Now my previous backpack that is begging to be replaced was originally in 2011, my summer backpack. It's a 70 liter backpack. I retired that, like I said, I went ultralight. So I retired that, but I kept using it over the years for winter backpacking because I needed to bring more gear. That's a 70 liter pack. So I had to make a choice between the 65 liter Kaika or the 75. And I decided instead of going down five liters, I would go up five liters because like I said, I like to bring a lot of stuff in the winter, uh, clothing layers, extra gloves, stoves, stuff like that. So this is the 75 and it is very big. They have another one called the Keb that is a bit lighter and probably less uh, rugged in terms of materials. But this guy right here is supposed to be uh, very water resilient as far as the fabric that it's made from all over. In addition to that, on the bottom compartment, it is a waterproof bottom. It's actually bifurcated into two sections. You have a mesh pouch here, right? And that whole section there, you can zip it open if you want and turn it into one large compartment. But for winter and wet conditions, what I'm planning to do is leave it shut because it is waterproof in this section. So I could put stuff like my micro spikes, which are going to be wet. They're going to go on and off. This is my um, kind of go-to traction for hard packed snow and ice. I think I might have gotten those on backcountry.com many, many moons ago as well. But that gives me some traction, but they do get wet. So if I put them in here in the mesh pouch, they would be protected from the rest of the pack because it is waterproof down here. On the sides, I got some nice mesh pouches that I can put a water bottle in or whatever I want. And they do cinch down to contain. They're really big, but as you can see by cinching it down, it's holding my one liter water bottle pretty good. On the back there, it's got some Velcro loops that I'm using to attach my hiking poles. In the winter, with snowshoeing and balance and deep snow, I always bring hiking poles. So these are some Black Diamond folding poles. I forget the exact name, but I'll post a link down below. Um, actually, I'm gonna post links for all of this gear from backcountry.com in the video description below. So if you want more details or if you wanna support the channel, feel free to use those links. But those are my hiking poles right there. And as you can see, they clip on pretty easy. I still have to play with this a little more. Um, I'm figuring out where to put my snowshoes, which I didn't bring out here today because I didn't want to look completely crazy. But I also have to just kind of figure out a game plan for where I want to attach them. Those of you who have hiked with snowshoes probably know uh, where to put them on your pack can be a bit of a strategy game, but I'll figure that out later. In my case, I'm using old school MSR Denali Ascent snowshoes. Uh, they're from the 90s. I got them secondhand. They don't make them anymore. I think the modern equivalent, when I looked it up on their website today, would be the MSR Evo Ascents, which are probably a lot lighter modern materials and whatnot. But they have the nice uh, teeth all the way down the side to give me traction. And the Ascent version of snowshoes, if you're wondering, typically, at least with MSR, means that there is a heel riser in the back that you can flip down and that'll give you a more stable base when you're going up 
uh, high angle of attack ascents. Really actually makes a huge difference compared to snowshoes for just walking around on flat terrain. Another cool thing about this pack that I'm super excited about is that not only does it have side zippers, right? I have one pack at home that has a side zipper so you can reach right in like I am now. But in the case of this pack, they're on both sides. But in addition to that, if I undo both of them, this bag actually, thanks to some Velcro, unloads medic style, or some of you would say luggage style. It gives you quick access to the entire bag. That's nice for winter, because like I said, I usually pack a ton of extra clothing and whatnot, and I'm usually digging through the top of my pack. So now when I get to camp, I can kind of get settled and I can undo this. And if I pack smart, which I'll try to, um, I should be able to reach right in and grab my stuff. Before I move on, I should point out though, some of you are looking at this and going, how heavy is that pack? Well, <laughs> that is one downside of the uh, Fjallraven and Kaika. It is heavy as a pack. It is pushing, actually it's a little over seven pounds, I think close to seven and a quarter, which like I said earlier in the summer, my entire base weight, that's everything I bring except for food and water and variables like that is like eight and a half pounds at its lightest. Before you freak out though, what I've learned over the years is I'm all about the light backpacks, but if you are going to bring more stuff, you are gonna be way more uncomfortable and it's gonna actually feel a lot heavier to overstuff a lightweight backpack beyond its weight rating or even close to its weight rating compared to getting a backpack that's heavier but is actually designed to carry a heavy load. It's gonna feel more comfortable and therefore feel lighter. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but in my experience, it's true. So even though this is seven pounds, um, even loaded with all the gear I have today, it feels more comfortable than the times I've taken my one and a half pound ultralight backpack and stuffed it. It's a balancing act. So for winter, I'm more than willing to have a heavier backpack that actually distributes that load more evenly and feels more comfortable. This pack is so huge that I was wondering if I had a rain cover that would actually fit it. But they actually include one. So no worries right there, right from Fjallraven, uh, I got the rain cover there. So I know for a fact that's gonna fit this thing perfectly, which is a nice little bonus. All right, so moving past the backpack, we're gonna get into the third and final item that I chose from backcountry.com. And that was new boots, new winter boots. Yes, finally. <sighs> I have been using the same boots for winter backpacking since I think, 2012. Yeah, I don't even want to think about it. These right here are Solomon Tundra Pro winter hiking boots. These guys came up as very high rated, so I jumped at the opportunity to try a pair of these. They just look really solid and waterproof. They do have a nice tongue there with the laces, but the material compared to my old boots, it just looks more solid and impermeable to water which is nice. Solomon makes a lot of backpacking gear as well as they specialize in like ski boots and snowboarding boots and stuff like that. So that's why I kind of trusted them to make a boot that would be good for deep snow and winter wet conditions. My wife has a pair of Solomons that she was really happy with for years. So I figured I'd head in that direction and then I saw this boot that they make and I was pretty excited to try it out. On the inside, it's pretty cool. They actually have this, um, it's like a faux fur material that compared to my old boot, which is kind of like a harder plasticky material inside, feels really comfy for lack of a better term. They are rated technically <laughs> to negative 40. Now, much like sleeping bags or any other gear, you know, take that kind of with a grain of salt, but it's all relative. Um, my previous boots were rated to negative 20. And I could say I legitimately did take them to negative 20 and a little below and they were fine. But if I wasn't active, they were 
or I should say my feet did get a little cold. So with these being negative 40, I think these will be perfect for me. Uh, they have a climate shield insulation inside that is breathable. So they're supposed to still expel moisture, um, but keep liquid and other moisture, snow, rain, etc., from going in. So there you have it. There's my three pieces of backpacking gear that I upgraded. I'd be interested to know if you guys had the opportunity to upgrade three pieces, uh, essential pieces of gear for winter backpacking, what would you choose? Uh, let me know down in the comments, but that's what I went with. For right now, I think that pretty much covers it. So I wanna thank backcountry.com for partnering with me and sponsoring this video, giving me some really cool gear. I'm looking forward to getting out there and using it. Till next time, I'm Syntax77, and you have fun out there. <laughs>